This episode of News Jump is brought to you by HelloFresh. Businesses make bad decisions all the time, but there is something particularly baffling about the decisions that OnlyFans has made over the past couple of days, especially when you consider their entire revenue stream, the thing that they are known for, and also the seemingly unanimous support that their platform has received as a result of it. Fresh. Organic, free dir range, direct con to consumer, farm to table adult content, where the creators are in almost complete control of their businesses. Artisanal pornography. Yes, OnlyFans is doing away with that. No more adult content on their platform, which is leading many to wonder why, and also leading people to say, "Rest in peace, OnlyFans." And yeah, this does seem very stupid, and it does seem like a very quick way to completely destroy the company. But let's look into what's going on here anyway. Yeah, also some very confusing messaging coming from all sides about what this even is. Yes. So as you'll hopefully remember, we literally just, <laughs> in our previous episode, covered OnlyFans' potential maybe pivot towards more universally acceptable, aka safe for work content on this week's episode of Tech News Day. And that news was old news within minutes of yeah. that video going up. But um, So that move, as we reported it, would have allowed a new version of their app into app stores. This new app would allow them to come and have new series in the form of video podcasts and shows from a wide variety of genres like cooking and fitness, just featuring really hot people. Yeah, or uh, <laughs> just celebrities in general. Yeah, so this was all done under the pretense of not only bringing in more viewership that would have previously been uninterested in their former offers, at least publicly, mm -hmm. and would help the company secure a massive amount of funding from investors who might have seen their previous endeavors as too risky or scandalous for their dollars. At least publicly. At least publicly. <laughs> Listen, I uh, I love the business. Hey, I'm a member. But uh, I just can't in good faith use the bank's money to uh, invest in this. But yeah, just a day later, OnlyFans went a step further and announced that they would no longer be hosting explicit videos on their platform at all. Which again, it led pretty much everyone who was previously aware of their platform to wonder, why? Isn't that what you do? Now, first off, let's clarify some stuff here. Uh, they aren't banning nudity entirely, which is what a lot of the headlines and discussion would have you believe. Although, with how quickly this platform seems to be changing, that could also be inaccurate by the time this video goes up. Uh, OnlyFans, at least now, still allows nudity. Top and bottom. <laughs> uh, well, that's actually undefined so far. Okay. Uh, but uh, this nudity, it has to be in, quote, accordance with the site's acceptable use policy, which uh, gets updated on October 1st. And it sounds more restrictive than uh, anyone, creators or consumers, are going to be used to, and effectively bans sexually explicit content. Is there anything the in there about female presenting nipples? <laughs> Remember that? That's uh, that, Doesn't YouTube uh, like uh, police their... Uh, um, Stuff like that, but that, that was a, a direct story from. Uh, I think it was. That was I, I don't censored. remember which plot. It might have been Instagram. I believe it was Instagram. Yeah. It was uh, male nipples okay, female nipples banned. Yeah. So uh, it's still up in the air exactly what is defined as as explicit content or what would break their new policy. Uh, as of right now, it's it's up in the air. But uh, if you consider the reasoning behind the move it would be at least safe to assume or prepare for, especially if you're a creator, extremely restrictive policies. Uh, here's some more information from Bloomberg. 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 The changes are needed because of mounting pressure from banking partners and payment providers, according to the company. OnlyFans is trying to raise money from outside investors at a valuation of more than $1 billion. Quote, in order to ensure the long-term sustainability of our platform and continue to host an inclusive community of creators and fans, we must evolve our content guidelines, OnlyFans said. The company has been praised for giving sex workers a safer place to do their jobs, but sex work still has a stigma. The company handled more than $2 billion in sales last year and is on pace to generate more than double that this year. It keeps 20% of that figure. OnlyFans said it will provide more guidance on its new policy at a later date. Just stay on the edge of your seat out there, people who rely on this for income. Well, and that's also a smart move on their part because uh, up until these new rules take place, they can continue to make lots and lots and lots of money off of the content that made them famous. It's gonna be a lot of going out of business sales. Yeah, got big discount this month. Last chance. 
you might see some stuff you never seen before. Yeah. You're really going to push it'll the limits like, at the uh, finish line. It'll be like when fleets shut down. Everyone at the last minute went all out. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, as we said, any reasonable person would anticipate that the new policy would be as restrictive as possible, considering they are attempting to raise massive amounts of cash for their business in a financial world that still looks down upon sex work publicly. Now, there's a few ways to look at this, and from our perspective, all of them are inherently negative. Uh, OnlyFans has done great work for sex workers and adult entertainers by giving them a safe place to financially support themselves without being exploited by outside entities. But with this decision, they're not only turning their backs on the creators who literally made the app popular and created it, the content that gave it such a high valuation and rev revenue stream, they're shutting down the one thing that made this platform different from other already established platforms. So yeah, this is a bad decision for more than just financial reasons. Uh, and yeah, it also seems pretty bad for their financial future in the long term as well. Uh, just foot, gun, Where's my foot? If, what happened? Well, Who could have seen it coming? Yeah. Uh, if the very brief history of apps and services that provide content behind a paywall has taught us anything, it's that, in our opinion at least, OnlyFans will be very successful at burning through money before ultimately fizzling out due to a lack of interest from paying subscribers and viewership numbers that are too low for advertisers, uh, the amount of money needed to keep something like this afloat. Yeah. Um, it basically sounds like the new OnlyFans will be a sort of uh, Patreon slash Quibi hybrid. They will, I mean, they will get an absurd amount of funding and investment from outside sources, which the company will use to secure exclusive video content from famous celebrities or filmmakers or whatever, which will flop because mainstream popularity rarely translates to paid viewership, as we saw with Quibi. This is fucking Tumblr all over again. Yeah, it is. They a, bought like it's when was it Verizon? I think was the last owner of it. They bought. Yeah. They bought Tumblr, and, and then no porn. and then fucking destroyed it in an effort to make it more profitable, well, yeah, they took was, away the one reason people fucking used it. Th this was at a point in time where the only thing that was left to be successful on Tumblr was pornography. Yeah. So, extremely niche uh, <laughs> fandoms that were often quite pornographic. Yeah. And uh, they decided, let's kill the one thing keeping this platform alive in the hopes that we can turn it into something completely different. And didn't really work. That kind of thing almost never works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the cash that they presumably will receive, uh, it'll go quite rapidly. And then the company will struggle to recoup that money with subscribers and advertisers. Uh, or if they do, it won't be enough because the investors obviously want a large return on that investment. They don't want to break even. Mm. Not in the business of this company sustaining itself. It needs to make more money. Infinite growth. Infinite growth. Exactly. Now, if in this hypothetical scenario, the future... Uh, costs will be cut, internal jobs and productions will fall on a few remaining shoulders, less lucrative deals will be made for content, and then it will die a very public death with everyone online hurling I told you so's, all while the average creator who is the one ended up, or who, who will end up getting screwed the most, the people who are originally on the site and trying to obey the guidelines to stay there mm -hmm. and uh, remain financially successful. And this time, they won't even get paid for having a bunch of people watch them get screwed. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, it's like, like Elliot pointed out earlier, it's like they took the bad decisions, the specifically the bad decisions that ultimately doomed both Quibi and Tumblr, and combined them into one big bad decision for a completely separate platform. We heard you like bad decisions, folks. Well, we heard you loud and clear presenting all of your bad decisions in one platform. Yeah. We're going to be bleeding money, folks. They've just announced their new COO, Nathan Fielder. <laughs> the plan was simple. Ban all pornog pornographic content on OnlyFans yeah, on in a... an effort to save the company. <laughs> uh, now, of course, we could be completely wrong about this. And in a few short years, we could all be looking at OnlyFans as the next Netflix or something. It just doesn't feel like that's going to be the case. Yeah, seems unlikely. But who knows? We have been wrong before a few times. Yeah. Not all the time, but a few times. You know, the whole reason they're doing this is because of like far right Christian moral majority lobbyists uh, taking the story of Pornhub, which actually was like doing crimes, yeah, and just pressuring using that as evidence for why going to Mastercard and Visa and all these banks to pressure them strongly to not do business with anything even vaguely pornographic, mm -hmm. even though OnlyFans, uh, aside from a few examples where they did fuck up 
seems to do a much better job protecting the interests of its creators than Pornhub, for example. Mm -hmm. But they're still falling victim to uh, the same panic. Yeah, yeah. And so on and so on it goes throughout time. This thing happens all over over and over again. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you go watch uh, Boogie Nights. There's a Don Cheadle. Is it Don Cheadle? No, I can't remember. Well, I haven't seen it in a long time. I think, well, I think it's Don Cheadle. And if I'm wrong, I'm racist. But yes. I believe it's Don Cheadle's character goes and tries to get a bank loan to start a legitimate business uh, using the money he made. A as stereo a, business. As a, yeah, he wants to start yeah. a, a stereo business in the valley. In the you know, 80s. I believe that was Don Cheadle. Yeah. I'll join this risk-taking venture with okay. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and the bank's just like, no. No, we uh, we don't wish to do business with uh, people with your professional. It's not because you're black. Yeah. It's because you're a pornography actor. Yeah, but it's like it has it, like who fucking cares? Yeah, the ba the banks are they've always been like this. Yeah, it's the same the same reason fucking weed dispensaries, legal weed dispensaries in Los Angeles are just sitting on like vaults full of like millions <laughs> of dollars in cash. Yeah, and like the banks won't take terrified that they're gonna get raided by uh, burglars at any time because they can't use the fucking banks. Because the banks, they don't want to work with uh, these shady people in a completely legitimate business that everyone's totally fine with. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a real big fucking bummer. But yeah. if you're a struggling company looking for a life preserver, there's always famed entrepreneur, tech guru, and e-commerce savant, Soldier Boy. <laughs> Yeah. Who can uh, come to your rescue and Superman that hoe. <laughs> or at least claim that he's doing so in order to boost his own personal brand, which yeah. he is, he's, he's good at that. He's very good at marketing himself. So apparently Soldier Boy, uh, pfft, he owns Atari now. <laughs> there you go. Atari, the classic uh, video gaming brand. Yeah. Legacy what? brand. Legacy brand. Atari owns it. Or yeah. uh, Soldier Boy owns Atari. Uh -huh. And according to Soldier Boy... The very recent investment is paying off big, as he's not only acquired the legacy brand, but somehow made off with $140 million in the process. Because that's how business works. Um, They're like, We're gonna, you're going to get the company and $140 million. Here you go, soldier boy. <laughs> so if true, if, this wouldn't be all that strange, considering we're all very aware that soldier boy is a big player in the video game hardware space. Yes. He's a regular uh, Steve Jobs. <laughs> He's released uh, the Soldier Boy or Soldier Games all in one console back in 2018, alongside many other tech products like headphones, smartwatches, even a smartphone. Yeah. What can't this guy do? Mm -hmm. uh, these were, to be fair, <laughs> uh, all cheap Chinese tech products that Soldier Boy sold under the impression that they were custom branded products from a website that appeared to be nothing more than really just a dropship portal for Alibaba. Yeah. But that's business, baby. Still. I would assume that the Soldier Phone sold better and was more useful than the Freedom Phone. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same product. It really is. <laughs> uh, by the way, before we get into the Atari uh, acquisition, the Soldier Boy did actually release a new console this year. He's back in the game. Uh, and it looks like it's actually pretty cool if you're into mobile gaming on a device that looks like a Game Boy Color but with modern features and still plays things that you technically don't own, but it looks neat. The thing that got him in trouble the first time around was that he was actually marketing that these consoles came preloaded with like all thousands the <laughs> of, of uh, classic games. Which just, they technically did, but they were all ROMs, like bootleg yeah. ROMs of the games. Yeah, but just just blatantly selling pirated intellectual property. Yeah. What? What did I do? <laughs> but uh, yeah, th this device is at least a neat little device. And yeah. Like with his other consoles, this is nothing more than Soldier Boy's name printed onto the device as a Soldier Boy edition of something that already exists. And at least this time, it was done as an open collaboration with the company who makes the device, and wasn't just him trying to say that he actually developed a console on his own and then just drop shipped to generic. No, he was China. down in the, the Soldier Lab uh, <laughs> making the Soldier Games console yeah. with his lab coat what on. What chip shortage? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, does Soldier Boy own Atari? Well, here's the story of his relationship with the gaming company in his own words by way of XXL Magazine. According to a video posted on YouTube on Wednesday, August 18th, Soldier Boy, while rocking an Atari baseball cap and sweatshirt, hopped on his Instagram Live to announce that he reportedly owns the electronic gaming company Atari. I am now the owner of Atari, he said in the video. I own the video game Atari. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah. I mean, this guy's young. Yeah, well, he's, he's, I mean, not young, young, but... Atari was, like, 
long gone by the time Soldier Boy was aware of anything. Yeah, he does world. sound a bit boomerish, saying, I own the game Atari. The video game, Atari. Uh, but actually, boomers would know more about Atari than uh, anyone. But Soldier Boy is, what, in his 30s? I think he's still in his 20s. He's very young. He he got big when he was, like, a teenager. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. He might be 30 now, but last, last time we talked about him, I was like, oh, this guy's still in his 20s. Mm. Anyway. Back to the article. The Atlanta bread wrapper further explained that the people at Atari were proud of his work with the Soldier Game consoles and Soldier Game handhelds. Soldier Boy added that he's selling his own gaming company to Atari. We are about to sell the company for like 140 million, Soldier continued. Atari reached out, I just signed two deals with Atari. I'm the owner. The first rapper to ever own a video game company. So not only did Atari hand over the reins of their entire company, which now um, is just like they're a hotel chain, they're developing a, a chain of hotels. Yeah, it's uh, a weird one's opening in Vegas. The corporate history of like the of Atari, and at, at this point, I think it's really just the name Atari yeah. is is the business. Is it's very been interesting. Around a lot. Yeah, it's something that it's uh, it's sort of like Afghanistan. Every few years, someone <laughs> gets the idea that they're going to be the one to like revive the Atari brand. So you're saying Soldier Boy is the Taliban? Uh, yeah. 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 In some ways. <laughs> but uh, yeah, two things that like, make this story somewhat believable. The very weird passed around history of Atari and Soldier Boy's very clear affinity for and knowledge of the video game console space. I wish we had Nolan Bushnell here right now so I could be like, hey, did you hear <laughs> Soldier Boy owns Atari? Who? So you could be, who's Soldier Boy? <laughs> also, uh, like his plan at the time that we talked to Nolan Bushnell, which was, Amazing. Like Talking four years ago, five yeah, years ago? Yeah, his whole plan back then was that they were, the, the big scope plan was that they were going to go and buy out all of the dead malls and turn them into VR, gigantic VR playgrounds. Yeah, but he, I mean, he, was, he wasn't attached at all to Atari by that no, point. No. He was on his own. But he, he had big plans for VR that, as far as I can tell, haven't, <laughs> haven't come true. But he had big plans and he knew his shit. The man is a... Uh, very smart individual with a lot of great ideas. Mm -hmm. Whether or not those ideas pan out, that comes down to how much any uh, how much money any per one person's willing to give him. I guess. Yeah. Because it, but it, it was, definitely could be cool. It was fun to play life size pong in like a basketball court sized room. And there were successful uh, versions of this idea before the pandemic. Yeah. So and then the pandemic ruined everything because you don't want to put your face in something that someone else just put their face in. Yeah. So kind of put a. Little pause button on all of that for at least a decade. Yeah. Ugh, anyways. So obviously this sounds ridiculous uh, because it is. And for at least a few hours, Atari had neither confirmed nor denied the claims laid out by Soldier Boy. Uh, unfortunately, once word started to spread that he owned the company in a very lucrative deal, it was confirmed that Soldier Boy does not, in fact, own Atari. <laughs> and it doesn't seem as though any deal was made to acquire his previously established gaming hardware brand. Uh, okay, from their official Twitter account, we know that CEO of Atari is a dream job, but that honor belongs to Wade Rosen. This tweet resulted in a rebuttal from Soldier Boy, who started his rant with, fuck Atari, and then went on to claim that it was a misunderstanding that he owned the company, because according to him, Atari is a publicly traded company, so no one can own it, and that he was hired to revamp the company. Uh, but with their statement refuting his involvement, Atari and everyone employed by them can eat a dick, according to Soldier Boy. Yeah. Um, so that relationship soured pretty fast. So I would really like to know what actually happened here. If anything happened at all. I don't Did know. Did some scammer reach out to Soldier Boy saying, hello, it's me, John Atari. I I'd mean, like to... So, okay. I'm going to try to put the most realistic time, like uh, the most realistic thing that played out here is that Atari has been attempting to rebrand itself and they are doing hotel chains now. Mm -hmm. They have, within the next couple of years, a very large uh, uh, hotel opening up in Las Vegas. A very ambitious project. Hmm. Now, when you talk about gaming companies, specifically gaming companies like this, um, they often have uh, outside marketing firms working on their behalf. Yeah. And there isn't, an, usually in some cases, not an internal marketing department or one that doesn't handle everything. Mm -hmm. So what may have happened is that a marketing company that has Atari as a client approached various people, one of them being Soldier Boy, 
and got into a conversation about a potential financial relationship for promotion and collaboration. Okay. Which Soldier Boy then took uh, at more than face value, <laughs> or maybe twisted the words at some point, uh, and for a deal that wasn't signed, and did some free promotion yeah. to really get things going. That's the only thing that I can assume happened. Or maybe he was working on a deal that was going nowhere, and he decided to get ahead of it by being, I bought Atari to get get the people excited, so then Atari felt the pressure. Like, oh, geez, oh. now we can't go oh. back on it. Yeah, like in his in his very uh, vulgar statement that we can't replay here because it is very vulgar. Uh, it was just like nobody was talking about Atari before, before I said something, which is technically true, at least recently, outside of their plans to open up a hotel. I guess. Anyway, somehow that wasn't the only Soldier Boy news this week. Uh, <laughs> now, aside from being a viral sensation, thanks to random people reciting the lyrics to his song "Rick and Morty" at famous grave sites. Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty, huh? Rick and Morty, Rick, 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 huh? Rick and Morty. Huh? He's also <laughs> busy filling out his roster on the music label that he owns, SODMG Records. And folks, White Boy Summer is still on, though still canceled at the same time, because Soldier Boy has officially, apparently, signed Chet Hanks to his label. And we'll be releasing his next album. Did Chet Hanks confirm this news? He was right there alongside okay. Soldier Boy so in this, person. Not fake news, this part. I still am very curious as to whether any of these deals had pen to paper <laughs> at all. But uh, here's from Complex. The 31-year-old rapper... 31! Okay. So, still young. The 31-year-old rapper took to Instagram on Tuesday night to reveal he's signed Chet Hanks to Stax on Deck Entertainment. Big Draco broke the news in a video featuring himself and Tom Hanks' controversial son. It's going down, man, Soldier Boy said in the short clip. Chet Hanks, man, my new artist signed to SODMG Records as the first rapper signed this year. It's going down. Big Draco, we about to make history. You know what I'm saying? SODMG. Album on the way, just wait. Uh, so, like I said, uh, Chet Hanks was there and he also posted a, a video to his Instagram with the following caption, just signed to SODMG. Just wait to see what we do next. You dig? So look, it's been quite a year for Chet Hanks. So yeah. Almost all of it very bad. But despite the negativity surrounding him and, you know, the alleged domestic issues and the very recent anti-vax rant, he is ready to drop some tracks. He's ready to put it all behind him. Yeah. And it's about to be white boy winner. Here we go. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, that's the latest update on Soldier Boy and uh, and... By proxy, Chet Hanks as well. Great. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, we do have some more news for you coming up in a minute. But first, let's take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. The fall harvest is officially on with HelloFresh. Count on seasonal recipes like pumpkin cinnamon rolls and Friendsgiving ready sides, as well as fresh, high-quality ingredients that travel from the farm to your front door in less than a week. And HelloFresh's family-friendly menu is a big win for back-to-school season with easy, delicious recipes for drama-free dinners. Mm -hmm. In fact, HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, from vegetarian meals and calorie smart choices to extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy with recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. We're both big fans of the variety that HelloFresh offers. Uh, you'll you'll be aware of, if you watched the last video, that I... You did Not their fault, but yeah. I did have a little slip up for the first time in many years. Uh, HelloFresh nice made you so excited to cook that you went a little overboard. Yeah. And uh, and thank you. My fault. My yeah. fault. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, and it was uh, while cooking my favorite meal that I had from them this week. It was a full, uh, like, miso ramen. Oh, baby. Which was very, very good. It was uh, the first one in a while where I was like, uh, I'm going to challenge myself. I like all the stuff with pasta and noodles from them. I like a lot because you get fresh Fresh noodles, not mm -hmm. this hard crap you buy at the store. These are fresh noodles. Yeah, and their tacos are always delicious. We always talk about those. So, um, anyways, start having fun in the kitchen like we are by going to hellofresh.com/newsdump14 and using the code newsdump14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that is up to 14 free meals by going to hellofresh.com/newsdump14 and using that promo code newsdump14. All right, back to the news now, though uh, with. <laughs> More life imitating Curb Your Enthusiasm. And this time it actually involved Larry David himself, who came face to face with former Trump and Giuliani lawyer Alan Dershowitz, 
who uh, also has previously represented clients like O.J. Simpson, Jeffrey Epstein, and Harvey Weinstein in various capacities. He really knows how to pick them. He's, uh... And, and implicated in the Epstein thing, I believe. A very interesting sort of. character. He was like one of the one of the first like superstar celebrity lawyers yes. of the '80s. Had a great reputation at the time. There's a movie about him starring like Ron Silver, like a drama movie about uh, Alan Dershowitz. And at this point now, he's just uh, an old crank, kind of a joke, mm-hmm. and also a real piece of shit in a lot of ways that I don't even have time to get into. But uh, <laughs> yeah. If you should listen to the A Lab podcast. A great, a great podcast about how all lawyers are bastards. <laughs> um, they have a great episode about that guy. But anyway, this Larry David, Alan Dershowitz thing. This all went down inside of a grocery store in Martha's Vineyard, which you'll know from uh, that's where the rich people go to. That's where Obama had his birthday party. And uh, yeah, that's is that Long Island uh, or is that Massachusetts? I don't know. I the, should know. What's the the, the one, East Coast is all just blat to me. Yeah, I don't know the, where the Long is. Island is the uh, Hamptons. Yeah, is yeah, Martha? yeah. Martha's Vineyard is. Well, I hope to, to one day make enough to know where the where yeah, the place it's, is. Yeah, it's useless information yeah. for me. <laughs> um, they're at Martha's Vineyard, a place you're not allowed to know where it is because yeah. that's where the rich people all go and yeah. escape that's to. That's where they can go out to the grocery store there. and really be themselves and get yeah. into arguments. Apparently, so Larry David. Creator of Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm, <laughs> ran into Alan Dershowitz, who's on the Epstein flight logs, yeah. in a grocery store in Martha's Vineyard. And uh, here's how the conversation went down. Uh, from page six, who got the report from someone who witnessed everything, a, a, a source who happened to be snooping. A snoop who didn't belong in Martha's Vineyard. They, they broke the omerta of Martha's <laughs> Vineyard, where whatever happens in Martha's Vineyard stays there. We don't want the poor to know about any of this shit, yeah. especially not the rituals. I believe it's Massachusetts. I'm going to say Massachusetts. All right. Ricky will be Dershowitz. Uh I'll be Larry David in the conversation. (laughs) Perfect. We can still talk, Larry. No. No, we really can't. I saw you. I saw you with your arm around former Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. It's disgusting. He's my former student at Harvard Law. I greet all of my former students that way. I can't greet my former students? It's disgusting. Your whole enclave is disgusting. You're disgusting. (laughs) Uh, added the stunned source. Larry walks away. Alan takes off his T-shirt to reveal another T-shirt underneath it that says, it's the Constitution, stupid. He keeps that on at all times, just in case he gets in an argument. <laughs> uh, they were told that Dersh, quote, drove off in an old, dirty Volvo. Oh, that's cool, actually. He's going to get followed by the police in Martha's Vineyard. Like, what is this person doing here? Driving oh. a Swedish automobile? <laughs> get out. Uh, reached for comment, Dershowitz confirmed the exchange and told us that he and the Curb creator had been friends for many years until the lawyer began working with the Trump camp. He told us that he'd greeted David at the store, but that the comic had walked away from him, which is when he said, we can still talk. Uh, And their spy picked up the dialogue. Uh, Dershowitz told them that while it might sound on paper like an awkward scene from Curb, it, quote, wasn't funny at all. (laughs) I don't know, it sounds pretty funny to me. It's funny because, like, Dershowitz, like, three years ago, he complained in the papers about how everyone was being mean to him at Martha's Vineyard. All, all, none of his old friends wanted to talk to him now that he's, like, in the tank for Trump and going on Fox News all the time uh, defending Trump against You sold your soul. And, and what did it cost? Everything. Yeah. He's, Everything. He, uh, this guy, how Dershowitz is such a piece of fucking shit. Like, it, it really, look into this guy. He ruined the career of a uh, a professor like he literally got a professor blacklisted uh in the united states uh it, it's some wild shit i don't want to get into it but you know it's not funny though a bunch of assholes who are ruining air travel by not only being rude rowdy and generally disgusting but also assaulting other passengers as well as airline personnel <sighs> it keeps happening we have of course reported on plenty of stories over the just the past few months not even the past year the past few months of people just losing their fucking minds, specifically on airplanes or in airports, most seemingly due to mask mandates. Yeah. It's their, like they bought a plane ticket just to make the very public statement and ruin the travel plans of everyone on that plane. Just, I'm having, it's, you know, I'm not able to inconvenience enough people down here on the ground. If I I really want to inconvenience 150 yeah. people at once. When I go into a store and try to make a scene, they just shuffle me out the door and everyone can keep shopping. I need a venue where people are held against their will yeah. to my rants. And that's what it seems like, because it like 
These people, they go to the airports knowing full well that they're going to pull some shit. Yeah. And I guess they think in their deluded mind they're all main that everyone's characters. gonna stand up and clap. Yeah, they, they all have- rip their masks off. Like many people these days, these people all have main character syndrome where yes, they, they, feel, they feel that the story of the world is them versus everyone else. And uh, you know, they just need a chance to prove their heroism in front of a bunch of people and everyone will clap yeah. And Obama will give him $100. And invite him to his birthday party. Yeah. But only if they provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. I don't know. He, he cut that that roster at the last minute because mm. he realized it's a bad look with the Delta. So yeah. they had to. Well, it was. <laughs> Apparently. Is, it's like, it, even if everyone is vaccinated, it, it's like, yeah, it's a fucking bad look. You're giving yeah, free it, ammunition. It's stupid. He shouldn't be having a birthday party at all because he sucks. But... Uh, <laughs> I hope he has a bad birthday, <laughs> yeah. actually. I hope he didn't get in any presents. And George uh, Bush came and he was throwing out candy to everyone. It was apparently it was, it was a source of a lot of drama among the uh, D.C. elite class of people because some of them, they got cut from Obama's birthday. They were butthurt. They were like, after all I did for you, Barack, you choose this guy over me. You choose John Kerry over... Who cares? Anyway, <laughs> back to the planes yeah. and the main characters who are ruining everything for everyone else. These incidents have already racked up a surprisingly large amount of fines against the unruly passengers, with the FAA looking to potentially go after more assholes who simply can't act normal for even just a few short hours. Here's CNN. Federal authorities are proposing more than a half million dollars in new fines against commercial airline passengers they say refused to wear masks, hit flight attendants, and even threw luggage across the cabin. Yeah, and some of these fines that people are getting are like fifty thousand dollars. Good for one. You, Good. Which is like, yeah, you it, you're on a plane. Things yeah. are way more serious on a plane when you do them. You are violating. You know, you're kind of spitting in God's face by even flying at all. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I wish this people, was not God's plan. People should be taking this a lot more seriously. This isn't just a bus in the sky. This yeah. is this is a. But look, assault on a sidewalk, bad. Assault on a plane. Real bad. Felony. Yeah. Federal crime. Um, but that article continues. The Federal Aviation Administration's announcement Thursday of $531,545 worth of fines against just 34 passengers accused of being unruly on board is the single largest announcement of federal fines since the start of a nationwide crackdown earlier this year, bringing this year's total to more than $1 million. Of the incidents detailed by federal investigators for the first time, nearly two-thirds involved passengers accused of violating the federal transportation-wide mask mandate, which was just extended by the Transportation Security Administration to remain in place through January 18th. Federal documents show that nine of the 34 incidents involve a passenger accused of touching or hitting another person on the plane, including crew members. Eight passengers are accused of illegally drinking alcohol they brought on board the plane. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's kind of something that I feel like in the olden days, pre-COVID, but still post 9-11. I mean, if you're you getting get away with if, if you're you getting sloppy. If you're getting fucking wasted and causing trouble, yeah, that's bad. But have I, 15 years ago, gone to the uh, what do they call it where you buy it before the an duty free? Store? The duty free, and then maybe he took a swig on the plane. Who knows? Oopsie days. Not me. But uh, yeah, that seems like a pretty low on the scale mm. kind of thing. Uh, but it goes on. Half of the incidents involve flights to or from vacation destinations in Florida. Wow. So half of all of these outbursts were either going to or leaving from Florida. I am demanding a complete shutdown to the state of Florida until we can figure out what the hell is going on. We need to get that gigantic Bugs Bunny over to the Florida-Georgia border and start sawing it off. Mm -hmm. The hurricanes just aren't working. The hurricanes that Obama has been sending for the past 60 years. Simply have Obama done needs to send more hurricanes. Yeah. Uh, it continues with this announcement the FAA has now proposed fines against nearly 80 passengers after receiving nearly 3,900 <laughs> reports of incidents. The FAA said on Tuesday that based on the reports, it has opened 682 investigations into possible violations of federal laws. It also has apparently gotten so bad that flight attendants are now taking self defense training courses from air marshals in a bid to protect themselves and other passengers. Uh, from CBS News. With pandemic stress frazzling the nerves of COVID-anxious travelers, there is a renewed sense of importance among flight attendants to learn how to protect themselves. Quote, it's getting crazy out there lately, so it's better to know what to do to defend ourselves against any sort of attacks, one flight attendant told CBS News. The air marshals in the New York field office say a post 9-11 self-defense program that had been on hiatus during the pandemic returned last month with a renewed sense of urgency. In almost a decade on the flight deck, Judith, who declined to provide her last name, said she's never had to get physical with a passenger. But she says if she has to, 
Now she's ready after <laughs> taking the self-defense classes that the TSA has offered. Quote, I don't know what that's called, but like you grab their hand and then you roll them onto the ground. I thought that was really useful, <laughs> she says. It was surprisingly fun. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we obviously wish that all this chaos and flights would stop completely. Flying is already a hellish experience, but at the very least, it will be entertaining to see videos of flight attendants kicking people's asses and those people getting fined just life-ruining amounts of money for being a dumbass. Yeah, they're going to get Good. taken to the ground by a flight attendant, and then they're just going to drop a bill on them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Anyways, we do have a Mike Lindell update for you. Oh, my God. This uh, guy. This fucking guy. The Sioux Falls police have released a photo of the suspect in the Mike Lindell assault case, which uh, turned out to be, at best, an uncomfortable selfie with a random person, or at worst, a man who inadvertently poked Lindell in the ribs with either his thumb or a tactical tangerine while taking a selfie. Uh, either way, in the police report, Lindell explained that it was, quote, one of the worst attacks I'd experienced. So uh, if you see this man, this very happy looking man who is thrilled that he just got a picture with his favorite pillow salesman, yeah. be careful uh, or don't and just say hello. And yeah. whatever you do, probably don't call the cops because it's almost certain that he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> A pro-Trump congressional candidate and conference attendee, Jeff Buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> Buongiorno. Great, great name. Now, that person is someone that you, you would think would take Lindell's side if any of this were true. And this seems to be a case with Lindell recently where people you think would align themselves like, and lie no, on his behalf. He's lying about this. <laughs> just being like, this is not true. No. Uh, according to reporting from Insider, Buongiorno said that, quote, there was no attack, <laughs> calling it a nothing burden. <laughs> He added that he saw Lindell walk to the elevator after the photo was taken and that he did not appear to be in any pain. Quote, the elevators are glass and witnesses saw Lindell go up to the sixth floor, Beyond Giorno tweeted. I think he literally, like, from staying up for three straight days, was experiencing some mania. Yes. And uh, perhaps uh, seeing and hearing things that weren't actually there. Uh, Anyways, yeah. let's end the episode with a bit of good news. Yeah. A handful of students from across the U.S., have some extra spending money in their pockets to use towards more creative endeavors, or honestly, whatever the hell they want. All thanks to their friends at the Satanic Temple. Yeah. A non-theistic religious group based in the United States who gave out an award of $666 to students from elementary, middle, and high schools for submitting a creative work inspired by their own struggles at school. <laughs> from Loudwire, in many schools across the states, time for recess is being reduced in exchange for more classroom time. Budgets for arts, music, and culture are also being slashed to pump up students' grades in subjects such as math and science. Creatively-minded kids aren't having their needs met, but the Satanic Temple is encouraging American students to express themselves, regardless of religious affiliation. The $666 prize was given to one elementary school student, one middle-slash-high school student, and two high school graduate-slash-high education students. The elementary school prize was won by Ollie from Texas. His prompt was, what do you hate most about school? To which Ali answered with a fantastic essay. One portion of Ali's essay reads as follows. Here is something I hate, having to write whatever the teacher wants you to write. I like writing a lot, but only when I can write what I want. For example, last year my teacher wanted me to write about animals. I chose to write about penguins, but I really wanted to write about ninjas. <laughs> I had to do all this research about penguins instead. It's not fair. Hell yeah, Ali. Uh, the other prizes for the middle and high school age students lean far more on the serious side of what they deal with at school. Uh, and they include uh, the middle school student did a wonderful poem. Uh, and there's also the, the high school aged or graduate uh, students did uh, some very pertinent art uh, for their submissions. Um, but uh, yeah, you can view all of that over on the official website for the Satanic Temple. And apparently they do this every year. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you're looking to uh, win some extra money on the side, don't forget to submit next year. Uh, all of that is, uh, and of course, everything else we've talked about today is all linked below. So make sure you check all of that out. Did you see the, did you ever watch the documentary they made? I think it was called Hail Satan. Is it? Well, so Church of Satan and Satanic Temple the, are different, but this is Church of Satan? Or no, Satanic, Satanic Temple. Temple. So uh -uh. The Church of Satan is the ones that are like actually into Le Levian like well, Satanism. And Satanic the, Temple is like more of a troll group. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it an interesting documentary. The Church of Satan is the one that does like the uh, putting the religious figures on government buildings because they put the Bible well, I there. I thought that was a satanic temple. Look, they're both great. Anyway, this documentary, Hell Satan, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, worth a watch. I believe that's what it's called. You'll look it up. Oh, also in uh, Jeopardy news, the guy that uh, hired himself for the hosting gig. Uh, <laughs> already gone. Already gone. 
Yeah, and, and it was what's weird is that, that was like a very strange saga of just like this was the guy in charge for like months. He was in charge of finding Alex Trebek's replacement. We looked everywhere. And then after like he's like, all right, guys, we've reached a decision. And oh, my gosh, wait, that's me. I, I guess I'm going to be the new host. People are like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And then, then, then people who wanted to know who he was started looking into him. They're like, this guy kind of sucks, like, as a well, person. Well, so there's a bunch of reasons he <laughs> sucks. Like, the the very upfront reason that he sucks is that he took over executive production on the on the show and then gave himself the yeah. job. Uh, when there were multiple beloved candidates who did temporary hosting gigs, yeah. like LeVar Burton and, uh, 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 what's the guy? Ken uh, Jennings. Ken, Ken Jennings and uh, Aaron Rodgers, who did yeah. great. Um, and, and not Dr. Oz. Fuck him. But he did do a hosting gig. But uh, yeah, so then it comes out, and the big outrage with this guy was that he like said some stuff on a podcast eight years ago that was yeah, like, like, women I, look frumpy in a one piece. Let me see those boobs. Uh, yeah, he was like, his female coworker, or not coworker, co-host, he was like, you ever take nudes? Like, these are the yeah. things that people were very outraged about. But also, apparently, he was ex- not a great boss when it came to yeah. women, too, yeah. uh, as far as like uh, uh, moving up in positions and stuff like that, which is a far bigger scandal than saying that someone looks frumpy in a one piece. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's gone just as quickly as he was there. Um, and uh, a the new host hasn't been named as far as when we were filming, but Maya Bialik is hosting the specials. Yeah, she sucks, too, in different yeah. ways. Um, Ken Jennings apparently ran into an issue where it's conflicting shows that he's on and properties or something. He also, he, he, he had that thing with Bean Dad. Yeah. He was, he was friends with Bean Dad. They made a podcast together. You remember Bean Dad, right? It was only it feels like it was ten years ago. It was literally eight months ago. But the Bean Dad incident, it it at the time it was it threatened Ken Jennings' chances quite a bit of uh carrying on the Jeopardy legacy. It, the the show that he's on now, alongside the other Jeopardy winners, is called The Chase, and it's pretty good. I haven't seen it. It's pretty good. I don't know when it comes on, I just see it pop up as a suggested thing and uh whenever there's nothing else to do, put it on. You know what else is great? You should start watching right now. It's a good one. Bachelor in Paradise. David Spade. Guest hosted the first one. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically I mean, if you ha- if you don't know the concept, it's all the I know the what, rejects from yeah, other seasons yeah. get together and fuck on uh, in in Mexico. Yeah. Um, but uh, very good for after this last season of Bachelorette, which stunk. It's very refreshing. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this week. Uh, make sure you watch our most recent episodes of Tech News Day uh, over here and uh, our other episode over here. And in the meantime, uh, have a great weekend. Uh, Weekly Weird News will be coming up soon. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment for engagement. Yeah, and be sure to check out Ricky and Lindsay's uh, Bachelorette podcast. We need to do that at some point. <laughs> we really need to do the podcast yeah. because, uh, yeah, I, it's it's a fun show to watch because you can't even parody it because it's so bad. Well, see you next time. Bye.